If there are two things in life I mildly enjoy, it's Harry Potter and sports. And in writing Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling felt the need to bring sports into the fictional world of magic she had created. She came up with a game known as Quidditch. It looks kind of similar to the way real sports are played, but the twist is that it involves flying around on broomsticks. This is a really cool and creative idea for a world that is a reflection of our world, but with a medieval magic spin to it. Just one problem. If you carefully listen to the rules of Quidditch, you'll realize something. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. What do I mean specifically? Well, let me explain by giving five reasons why Quidditch is a terrible sport. Number five. It encourages children to practice witchcraft. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Encouraging children to practice witchcraft is obviously a good thing. For real, number five. It can be canceled for no good reason. This is somewhat of a minor point, but the way Hogwarts handles Quidditch and the Goblet of Fire has always really bothered me. The Triwizard Tournament is being hosted at Hogwarts, so then the staff decides to have the entire Quidditch season canceled. Uh, why? Why does hosting the Triwizard Tournament make it impossible for there to be a Quidditch season? Apparently, it has something to do with the fact that they were building the maze where the Quidditch Stadium is. I have a hard time believing that there were no other places for them to have Quidditch. I mean, all you need is a wide open space to set up goalposts. Also, how is this fair to the Quidditch players? The Triwizard Tournament only involves one student from Hogwarts. How is it fair that the need of one student to compete in the tournament outweighs the 30-something students who are probably really passionate about Quidditch? Imagine how disappointing it would be if it was your final year at Hogwarts and your Quidditch career came to an abrupt end. I think this was done so that Harry wouldn't have to worry about Quidditch since he was just going to end up competing in the tournament. But that just feels contrived. Also, that's a huge missed opportunity for the story. You could have had Harry feeling disappointed for letting his teammates down due to his responsibilities for the tournament. Like I said, the ease with which Quidditch is cancelled is bullshit. Number 4. Muggle Quidditch. Yep, I'm making this an entire reason. Look, I've got nothing against LARPing, but don't act like your nerdy hobby is on the same level as regular sports. The thing I find the most ridiculous about real life Quidditch is the fact that the players actually hold broomsticks between their legs. In the books and movies, the broomsticks are there because that's what gives them the power to fly. Broomsticks don't do that shit in real life, so you might as well just run around. You look like a fucking doofus. Listen, for anyone who plays Quidditch, it will never be as cool as soccer, or basketball, or hockey. A cool Quidditch player is like a five-sided square. It goes against the natural mechanisms of our very universe. Number three. It's fucking dangerous. Let me get this straight. In Quidditch, there are these things called bludgers, where a player takes a bat and hits a heavy ass ball toward another player, where it then knocks them unconscious as they then proceed to fall 10,000 feet from the sky. And they let 11 year olds play this shit? No concussion study could ever be released that makes football look more dangerous than Quidditch. And the fact that Quidditch players are in constant threat of dying a horrible death is made all the more problematic when you consider Quidditch games can last forever. In Quidditch, there are no quarters, there is no time limit, the only way for the game to end is for a player to catch the golden snitch. In the books, they even mention that there have been Quidditch matches that go on for months. Not only can Quidditch matches be insanely long, they can also be ridiculously short. In the Sorcerer's Stone, there's a Quidditch match where Harry literally catches the snitch within seconds of the game starting. The other players don't even have a chance to do anything. In economics, there's something called the law of diminishing return. It has to do with the balance of too little or too much. What I'm getting at is that eventually the entertainment value of a Quidditch match goes away after a certain point. Eventually people are going to want to see a winner be decided. I know in sports like baseball, the game can theoretically go on forever, but at least the outcome isn't being decided by some arbitrary device that another player separate from the rest of the game has to catch. The fact that you can only end the game by catching the snitch, and that traditional means of ending a game like sudden death or overtime are nowhere to be seen is bullshit. If you have to make everything revolve around the snitch, then couldn't you magically program the snitch to be easier to catch as the game progressed? Oh, and speaking of the snitch... 
Number one, catching the snitch is the only thing that matters. You see all this shit about scoring the quaffle through one of the three hoops? You see all the excitement? All the intensity? Yeah, none of it matters. Not only does catching the snitch in the game, but it also gives the receiving team 150 points. So, whichever team catches the snitch wins. Um, actually, catching the snitch doesn't necessarily mean you win. If a team has a 160 point lead, they can still win if the opposing team catches the snitch. You realize how dumb you sound when you make this argument? Look at it like this. What if a team only has a measly 140 point lead? Why does a team that was getting their asses handed to them deserve to win because one player managed to do something that had nothing to do with the core game? Well, Tom, Brazil is doing quite terribly in this match. The Stalywards for the Germans sure are performing astonishingly well. That's right, James. This has got to be the most embarrassing for those jolly lolly players for Brazil. Wait, wait, what is this? Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Brazil's weasel catcher has managed to catch the stray weasel that we let loose in the stadium! Unbelievable! Brazil is now awarded 10 goals! Brazil wins! It's unadulterated madness! Also, the books mentioned that a team catching the snitch and still losing is extremely rare. Um, um, well, it's not like the seeker catching the snitch automatically wins the game, so how can you say catching the snitch is all that matters? What do I do with it? You catch it. Before the other team seeker. You catch this, the game is over. You catch this, Potter. And we win. Hey, um, can you, can you play that again? You catch this, Potter. And we win. One more time? You catch this, Potter. And we win. Ah, feels good to be right. Anyway, that's my list. I just want to say, I still obviously like Harry Potter. This is just me nitpicking. This doesn't hurt the quality of the books or films or anything. But considering that people are actually taking this game seriously as a competitive sport makes me confused. So I felt the need to put my thoughts out there. I also want to apologize to JK Rowling because I'm pretty sure she had no idea when she came up with Quidditch that some disgruntled asshole on the internet would feel the need to tear the game to shreds. I imagine she just wanted to give her protagonist a way to shine in the story so she made the Seeker overly important. And if you still think that the Seeker's role isn't overly important, let me ask you something. Do you think the story would have worked if Harry hadn't been the Seeker? Like, the Seeker was still present in the game the exact same way, but Harry was just another player trying to get the ball through the hoops? No, of course not. Well, that's all I have for now. You've just watched one of my classic videos. See you next time.